we're mainly made for a pink type of pride. Hallelujah! <laughs> a brand new world where this book is in every hotel room in the world. Can I get an amen? Amen! <sighs> this is my dream, ladies and gentlemen, and it starts here tonight. Join us on our holy quest. Can I get an amen? Amen! <laughs> of this book, know that no collection is complete without the brief biography of the life of William Shakespeare. Providing this portion of our show is the third member of our troupe. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Bo Carvajal. Yeah. We you, oh, we? So, William Shakespeare. I was Googling him last night, actually, uh, and I found some pretty good stuff. So, William Shakespeare was born in 1584 in the town of Stratford, of Park Avon, Warwickshire, oh, sorry. The third of eight children, he was the eldest of son John Shakespeare, a locally prominent merchant, and Mary Arthur, daughter of a Roman. In 1582, he married a farm, farmer's daughter named Anne Hathaway. Different Anne Hathaway. That's a shame. <laughs> okay, Shakespeare arrived in London in 1588, there he dictated to his secretary, Rudolf Hess, the work, my Um, Okay, in which he set forth his program for the restoration of Germany to a dominant position in Europe. After reoccupying the Rhineland zone between France and Germany, and annexing Austria, the Sudan land, and the remainder of Czechoslovakia. Okay. Shakespeare invaded Poland on September 1st, 1939, thus <laughs> in World War II. I never knew that before. Shakespeare remained in Berlin when the Russians entered the city and committed suicide with his mistress in the throne. He was buried in the church of Shepherd, though his head is frozen in a holy cave in Glendale, California. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are now proud to prevent the complete works of William Shakespeare abridged. Benvolio, come here this afternoon to know our father. 
private pleasure in this case. Where is Romeo? Saw you again today? Why glad am I he was not at this fray? Hmm. Oh, where is he? I must find him. Have you seen Romeo? No, I don't see him. Fine, Bridget. I don't know where he's at. I'm the air. I'm suffering. <laughs> oh, there he is! Oh, Romeo! Good morrow, cuz. Is the day so young? But new sharp nine. I mean, but sad hours seem so long. What sadness has these Romeo's hours? Not having that much happen makes them short. In love? Out. Out of love? Out of her favor, where I am in love. Oh, that's the love. So gentlemen's view should be so rough and tearless and proof. Alas, that love, whose view is muffled still, should have thought I see cat mercy with will. Oh! Uh, oh, fine. Go ye to the feast of Capulets. There such to the fair Rosalind, whom thou so lovest. Go thither, and I'll compare her face to some I shall show. And I'll make that think, that's one, a crow. None fairer than my love. Oh, and the street food, too. Let's <laughs> go. Now hard we eat to the feast of Capulet, where Romeo shall meet his Juliet, and in a scene of time's romance, he'll try to get into Juliet's pants. <laughs> Woo! Look at all the ladies. No Rosalind. She <laughs> 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 not teach the torches to burn bright. Hath my heart no love till now? For I swear it's like, for I never saw true beauty till this night. Wait, wait. If I profane my worthiest hand, the gentle fine, gentle shrines this, my lips do blush and kill his righty stand, to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Oh, good kid, but you do run your hands too much. Which <laughs> man do you wish to show this? For saints of hands that pilgrim hands you touch, and public palms, holy palmers kiss. I have not saints' lips and holy palmers too. Oh, I pilgrim that lips that they must use in prayer. Well then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. Huh. Well, then from the sin of lips, then it took from mine. Sin from my lips? I would trespass to be urged, giving my sin again. Kiss you. It's in the script. <laughs> oh, you kissed by the book. Oh, come, mother. <laughs> is she a capulet? I so I fear. The more is mine best. What are you doing? Therefore, turn and draw. Tibble, I do protest. I never injured thee, but love 
Ozzy, better than thou canst devise. Thou art blind for you! Oh! Oh! Oh, oh. oh I'm slain. <laughs>
Juliet and her Romeo. And Romeo and Juliet are there. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, we did that in 12 minutes. Not bad. But if we're going to get out of here before midnight, we've got to move on to some more of these tragedies. Okay, let's see. Titus Andronicus. It is quite a bloody play, to be in fact. And we present it as a cooking show. <laughs> no surprise the obsession with food dominates his first strategy, Titus Andronicus. Hi, I'm Titus Andronicus. Welcome to the Gore Gourmet. Now that you've had a lousy day, your left hand chopped off, your son has murdered, your daughter raped, both her hands chopped off, her tongue cut out. The last thing you want to do is cook, unless, of course, you cook the rapist and serve it to his mother at a dinner party. My daughter, Lavinia, I will show you how. Good evening, Lavinia. Good evening, everybody. And how are we feeling today? Not so good today, Daddy. My hands were cut off, my tongue was cut out, and I was raped. How do you think I feel? Well, it's a pisser. But we'll get a revenge now, will <laughs> Now, hard villain, I will grind your bones to dust, and of your blood I shall make a paste, and of that paste I will cough and I will rear, and make a pasty of your shameful head. Lavinia, come and receive the blood. First of all, I want to make a nice, clean incision from the quarter artery to the jugular vein, like so. Ah! Ew! That's gross, Daddy! And when that he is dead, what should be right about now? I will go grind his bones to powder small, and with this hateful liquor temper it, and in that case, his mouth head should be baked at about 350 degrees and 40 minutes later, you'll have this lovely human head pie, which I prepared earlier. I even chopped up some lady fingers for dessert. Now, who will be the first to try this delicious high protein treat? Welcome, gracious Lord, welcome, dread king, we'll feed you eat. It's finger licking good. Yeah, just come up here. You can just start whenever. 
Here's the story of a brother by the name of Othello. He liked white women and he liked lemon jello. <laughs> uh, yeah, and a punk kid Yago who made himself a menace because he didn't like Othello, the more of Venice. Well, Othello got married to Desdemona. But he took off for the wars and left her alone. It was Amona. Oh, Brona. He, he left, left her, her alone. He gave her a letter and he did a telephone. Hey! But Iago had a plan that was clever and slick. He was crafty. He was sly. He was sort of a jerk. <laughs> he said, I'm going to shout for more. How are you going to do it? Tell us. Well, I know it's trying to fly his eyes. Too big, jealous. I need a dupe. I need a dope. I need a kind of a schmoke. So I find this chump sucker by the name of Tassio. And he plans on him to the moon to take a chip. So a fellow gets to wonder just maybe if, while he went out fighting, commanding an, an army, are Desi and Cass playing hide with Salami? So, 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 so long. Love. 
bury Caesar. So let's bury him and get on to my play. Answer me. I know the Cleopatra. Is this an act I see before me? Come on, Miss Wretch. Shakespeare. Because that's what happened to me. I was in school, 
setting Shakespeare in Mitchell's class today. And I'd just be thinking, I'd see the kids outside doing PE, and I'd be like, why can't this stuff be more like sports? Sports? What yeah. Do you mean? Sports. Well, they're exciting, engaging in anything. Uh, take the histories, for example. The king passing the crowd from throne to throne, player to player, running up and down the field, uh, getting hit down by each other, killing each other. It's exactly like sports, except you do it with your crowd. They are kind of similar, aren't they? Yep. I think I have a whistle in here. Oh, that's two. Okay, let's line up. Let's kick some royal blood. Twenty-five, twenty-two. Uh, Richard the Third, Henry's boy, part one, part two. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd is snapped to Richard the Second, that well-spoken 14th-century monarch. He's straight back to pass, looking for an air downfield, but there's a heavy rush from King John. <laughs> Oh, my brother splash things downwards! Victory is mine! <laughs> oh, but Henry the Sixth comes up with it. He's at the fifth. Oh. Here, you're lying. Oh, it wasn't again. I can't remember. Hmm. It was. Hang on. It had something to do with that. Uh, Oh, help this child. He's cutting Henry the Sixth up into three parts. That's gotta hurt. We have a win for the Royal of the Rosa cycle. King John is in the clear. He is currently at the 40 yard line. He's at the 30. He is now at the 20. Oh, 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 he's oh, oh, on the oh, 10 yard line. The oh, is out for the game. Facing him now is number 72, King Lear. The Reagan and Goneril, I hand off my kingdom. Cordelia, you go along. There's a penalty marker. Fictional character on the field. There is disqualified and is not. <laughs> Bastards. Lining up now is a father Santi of Henry IV and Prince Hal. Now, send your snaps to the quarterback. The quarterback is a hunchback. <laughs> Looks like Richard III's limp is giving him trouble. A horse. A horse. My kingdom for a horse. There's a pile up on the field. Follow oh, no. And Henry is just comes up with it. He's at the 15, the 10, he stops up the 5 yard line, the top off the 5 10. So who's your touchdown? Touchdown! Oh my, you gotta believe this is the beginning of a Tudor dynasty! Oh, Henry is just comes up with it. He's at the 15, the 10, he stops up the 5 yard line, the top off the 5 10. We just have to do it. What? But I don't want to do it. 
No. It's called the Complete Works of William Shakespeare. Fine. Then we'll just call it the Complete Works of William Shakespeare, except Hamlet. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> well, I think all of your new friends would love to see you. No, what do you they would say? not. Would you like to see me?
It's Bridget. Uh, uh, hi, Bridget. Uh, where are you? Who's your for? <laughs> you have both? Okay, put them on the phone. What the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Hello, Bo. How are you? I'm fine. Wait, no, I'm not fine. Okay, I'm standing here in front of a crowd of strangers, and they're all staring at me. No, I'm not me. No, you may not speak to my mom, because my mom is very busy right now, and she doesn't want to talk to you until you're on stage performing Shakespeare like a little trooper. Okay? Yes, that does sound like something she would say. Okay. Okay. Uh, put Bridget back on the phone. Yes, I love you too. <laughs> Hi, Bridget. Uh, how far out are you? Okay. What am I supposed to do in the meantime? Yeah, I, I can do that. Um, okay. Bye. Wait, Bridget, don't forget. Do not give Bo any sugar. You know his blood sugar. Bridget? Bridget? Um, they're on their way back. Uh, in the meantime, Bridget reminded me that I should cover the sonnets. Okay, uh, Shakespeare wrote 154 sonnets, which we have condensed onto this 3x5 note card. So, what I was thinking is that we could start over here with you, and you pass it down to the next to you, and they pass it to the row next to them, and just be going so on and other up, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And then it would end up with you. So, you. Did you just pass it to the row behind you? Yeah? Okay. So then, the person behind you passes the person next to them, next to them, next to them, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, um, yeah. So then it ends up with, I uh, don't know, maybe Mrs. McLean talk. Uh, you know, Bridget Bo should be back. Okay. Um, oh, right. The house lights, please, Bob. Thank you. Yes, the king, my father? Yes, the king, your father. Where was 
very strange. I will watch tonight. Perchance it will walk again. All is not well. Will the night will come? There by truly. Huh? It's very cold. Mm -hmm. Look, my lord, it comes. It does not come. His most valid, unnatural uh, murder! Murder? Murder? The serpent that did sting thy father's life! Now where's his crown? <laughs> my uncle! Your uncle! Let not the royal bed of Denmark become a couch for incest. Incest! A couch! <laughs> a do, Hamlet! Remember me!
Bridget just hasn't been herself lately. Bella! Who's, who's this Bella? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's this emotionless character named Bella in Twilight, and <laughs> she's not emotionless, man! She's going through hell! She means like her soulmate was like really sparkling a vampire, and then they have a chin, and he's like a vampire, and there's a she, and then I just I don't even care! Wait, wait, Bridget. You read Twilight? <laughs> Get out of his life. 
So he says, get thee to a nunnery. And in response, Ophelia screams. So I gotta scream. Well, it's very simple. Um, Hamlet says, get thee to a nunnery, and the Ophelia said, which is you, you scream. Okay, let's give it a try. Like, 
for God's sake, do something with yourself, like put on some makeup or something, okay? No <laughs> okay? There's a line straight out of Shakespeare's text that actually talks about makeup. Why don't we have them use paint and paint stick? Okay, well, how do you say that? Ready? Paint and paint stick. Ready? Section B. Paint and paint stick! Section A, you could really learn something from Section B. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, Section C. You guys are the most important people. Okay, so pretty much you guys are making Ophelia relevant to the 21st century. So pretty much, uh, what is she saying? Maybe she wants power, but she doesn't want to lose her femininity. Yeah, she wants to be like corporate executive, but she doesn't want to lose her femininity. Oh yeah, she feels like saying, look, cut the crap, Hamlet. My biological clock is ticking and I want babies now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not say that. Okay, ready? You're going to say, look, look cut, cut the crap, Hamlet. My Myself to hear the process. Now, mother, 
murder me? Come for us, there, Laertes. 
Thank you. High five. High five. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we just wanted to say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the complete works of William Shakespeare. <sighs> Three seven plays and nine seven minutes. Yeah, we actually finished a little bit early. Oh, um, can you come again? We don't have time. When we do, we catch our ears. <gasps> Yeah.